we are going to be drawing creatures from objects. So I have some ideas already. Um, hello, Icy. Hello, Carmelian Six. That's a sick name, dude. Um, but we're going to be drawing creatures from objects. I have a couple already in mind. But if you want to suggest... Oh, actually, <laughs> I forgot to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Jesse. I'm not Alyssa. Um, my name is Jesse. I am another one of Wing Canvas's instructors. Um, I teach cartooning and anime and art mentorship mainly. Um, but yeah, the cartooning, cartooning and anime is like the chill, fun classes. But the art mentorship is where I'm more uh, quote unquote professional, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have some ideas of what I want to do already, just kind of in mind. But what you can do in chat is if you want to suggest... Um, Hi, Alyssa. <laughs> no worries. Hi. Medibang Pro Jesse. I'm really not. I feel like I've bamboozled everyone at the studio. It's okay. Um. Anyway, um, if you want to suggest some objects that you want me to turn into creatures, um, by trade, I, I do like to um, do concept work. So sometimes I do um, character and creature concept work. Um, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to do that for a live stream too. Just kind of, you know, work on the fly, do all my stuff on the on the go. Um, hey, Runia. <laughs> um, and hello, Icy. Saying hello to Alyssa as well. Yes, Alyssa's in the chat here too. Um, but yeah, uh, mostly actually, mostly I work with comics, but I do do concept work on the side. Um. So if you want to suggest some objects that you want to see me turn into creatures, I'll be glad to do that. Um, because, you know, I, I love to work under pressure. <laughs> it's one of my my many, um, many, quote unquote, it's one of my few quirks. But I think I want to start with, you know what, let's do another, let's do another flower pot because... Oh, do you know what? Let's do one of those like windsill ones that are long. Cause I have a, I have a craving to draw a lot of legs. Um, but if you have, you know, some item suggestions, feel free to drop those in. And I'm gonna start with a with one of those like yes, yes, apply. Um, I'm gonna start with one of those like big, long. You know those like windowsill. Like the windowsill plant thingies, I love those. You know, if I had a proper windowsill, I'd probably have like six. Washi tape, <laughs> Lysol spray, soap, toilet paper. Lysol would actually be kind of fun. <laughs> Lysol spray, that would actually be kind of fun because then I could do like the spray bottle. Mm. Thank you. The gears are turning now. Um, washi tape. Washi tape could also be really fun, Arunia. I think that was Arunia. Yes, I love washi tape. I have a whole dra actually my desk. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. I get very off topic very easily. Um, I have a whole drawer in my desk filled with like washi tape and stuff. It's like my favorite thing. I have a I have a hankering to draw legs. Oh, you know what? I'm like, I'm very much like a a what if kind of person. When you're doing kind of character concepts, creature concepts. One thing that'll kind of help your creative gears start turning is if you go, like, keep up that what if factor. You know, like, what if you did this? What if you did that? You know, you just keep doing that. And it, like, it gets your gears turning. It lets you try things instead of being kind of close-minded to your designs. Because sometimes the weird designs end up being the best ones, right? I, I love bugs. I love, like, weird crustaceans and bugs, underwater creatures. So you're going to see a lot of legs like this. Yes, plants. More plants. Let's go. I'm so bad with plants. I really wish I was better. I have, I have, out of like the, how many plants are in my room? I, I stream from my bedroom, by the way. So this is one, two, three. I have three real plants. I have a bajillion fake plants. <laughs> I don't think I could work with real plants for like ever. Chrysanthemums. I love chrysanthemums. Chrysanthemums are such a pretty flower. My favorite flower is, um, 
oh what's it called like you know like a a lotus like the the lily pad ones those yeah those are my favorites but i'm feeling kind of buggy because if we're starting off with a planter i want to go with something buggy no i don't like the antennas let's not do that and if you don't like uh oh do i hmm hmm nah eh. I'm going to go without them just because I don't want to overdo some stuff. Oh! And these can be plant vines instead. Yes! Genius! If you have... Yeah. And these are like... Yeah. There we go. Let's get it. <laughs> this is what I'm like when I draw. I'm kind of... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like to be speedy when I draw, by the way. I'm not very, like... My sketches don't tend to be very, like, perfection-y. I am going to line all of these, by the way. Like, not completely, but, like, I'm going to line them, quote-unquote. Because I am very much... I love line work. I wish I could line absolutely everything that I did, but unfortunately I don't. These are going to be rough lines, though, because I can't be bothered. I'm joking. It's because I want it to go a little bit quicker. I guess I could work with the proper ones, but it's alright. I'm kind of going with this, like centipede kind of bug thing as I think I mentioned that earlier but like I'm in like a log bug eel kind of mood I've been in that mood for a couple days actually I did a really big piece the other day for portfolios is there ever time you'd use more than three layers when drawing um <laughs> most of the time for like okay so Alyssa knows this, but I guess and the other people at the studio know this. But um, for for me, I work with a very, very I'm known for working with a very very small amount of layers. I don't usually use that many, like excluding all my effects layers. I mainly work with just three. So it's like you know one for one for lines, one for color, one for sketch. Um, if I were to work with more than three, it would have to be a really big piece or one of my comic pages. Because my comic pages, I have, like, quite a few FX. Sometimes I need different areas overlapping others. Sometimes I have a whole background folder. If the, like, the more back uh, complex the background is, the more layers I have to do. But if it's something small like this, two to three layers, that's it, usually. If I'm really lazy, then I just stick to two. <laughs> cute bug, cute bug, thank you. I like my cute bugs. If you're not scared of bugs, by the way, um, my favorite bug, one of my favorite bugs is the, not the Luna Moth, but the, um, the Spanish Moon Moth, if you want to look it up. That's the Spanish Moon Moth. Spanish. Moon Moth. If you've never seen that thing before, it's gorgeous. Please look it up. It's so good. Like, please do it. It's beautiful. It looks like a butterfly, even though it's not a butterfly, it's a moth, which is pretty wild. Planter bug. Yeah, it's a planter bug. I'm trying not to spend too long on him. Because I don't want to... I don't want it to take forever. Even though I gave him how many legs? One, two, three, four, five, six. I gave him 12 legs. Even though I don't think I'm drawing all 12. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I don't think I'm drawing all 12. Uh. Oh, I should actually add one more over here. Here. Yes. Please listen to me. Okay. I have a very big love of legs. I like drawing legs. That moth is surreal, right? It's beautiful. It's a beautiful moth. I love moths. If you've never seen them, like, if you think that moths are uglier than butterflies, you've never seen a proper moth before. I'm just saying. Like, if you... Okay, so there's a Spanish moon moth that's really pretty. There's the 
Oh my god. It's the... Maple Rose Moth? Something like that? The... Something like that. It's it's pink and yellow. It's it's pink. It it's um it's native to here in Canada. It's native to Alberta technically, um but or like more northern Canada. My friend spotted one. She was like able to let it crawl in her hand. She's so lucky. Um, there's those. There's the Luna moth. That's really pretty. Um, the emerald moth. I think is what it's called. That one's like bright green. Crazy. Have I ever drawn mods before? I have. I love drawing um, bugs. I have. I don't like. Okay, I've drawn a lot of bugs. Not like properly, properly, but like, I've made characters based off of mods too. Just because I love drawing the wings. Hey, 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 Katie. Welcome in. I I hope that's how you pronounce that. Katie, Katie. Hello. I'm sorry if I butcher anybody's name. By the way, I don't want. I don't mean to be rude. I just. <laughs> I want to say hi to everyone. Yes, and then two branches. Oh, let's make them more branchy. Let's make them a little more branchy. Let's go. Yeah. So now they look more like branches coming off of the thing let the object inspire you right what is within the object what do you see when it comes to it right what's in a plant <laughs> it's been a while since we've been <laughs> able to be in touch with nature um what is within the plant what do you think is in there you know what i mean just let it inspire you a little bit Okay, let's add another layer here for the color. I don't think my uh, my method of the magic wand and then others will work here. So let me switch to the pen. Whoops. Excuse me. Oh, that's why. Um, that's too bright. Let's. There we go. So I guess I'll have to color this in manually because I think there's too many open spaces here. For me to do my magic wand trick. I'll do some more... For the next item, I'll do more concrete line work. Just so I can use that trick and I can show you. It'd be cool if that was a real planter. Yes! I love living things. Oh, I guess I should say. um, One of my credentials. So one of my things that I did. um, I went to school for a year for video game art um so i have been somewhat trained in concept work and 3d art as well um but one of the my very first 3d model was of a a planter that i named tulip <laughs> i named him tulip and it was like a little um flower pot robot and he had like a self-watering spout tail and you could that was like an on and off switch on the bottom that could like release water and whatever it was like it was really fun i got a really good mark on it even though i didn't know what i was doing but i still love that model to this day <laughs> a creature based off your computer and laptop funny if you had lights rgb oh yes that could be fun my laptop sucks but yes absolutely i will definitely do that be a real gamer girl <laughs> When you're working digitally, for all you lovely digitals out there, um, I always say that the things that will take you the longest are your sketching and your lining. In comparison to like when you are working traditionally, I think the things that take the longest are your sketching and your coloring. Because with um, digital, you have a lot of shortcuts when it comes to your coloring. And if you're not adding any effects or anything, then it's like your coloring really doesn't take that long, I find. Um, I guess it does depend on what kind of color you are. If you're like a full painted renderer that obviously is going to take you like forever um but if you're not then you're probably just you know vibe with it you know what i mean hello hello miss hello mcgronut <laughs> obama thoughts on lasagna you know what man i had lasagna a couple nights ago and you know i love lasagna bro i'm i'm gonna be able to my family calls it pasta cake actually that's what i <laughs> and hello mcgronut welcome in i'm um, sorry i got distracted by obama's comment um but welcome in welcome to 
your first stream. This is my first stream too. So well, this is new experiences for both of us. <laughs> um, but yeah, back on lasagna. You have a whip. Hashtag whip won't let you upload mine. Um, it might be file size. You're going to have to check that. Because unless if you have like Nitro, it's a max of like 8 megabytes, which sucks. But <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, thoughts on lasagna. My family calls it pasta cake. And like the other night we... um. Like, we usually make our lasagna homemade, but the other night we did, um, we just bought it from, like, a President's Choice thing, and I was, like, we ate it, but I don't think we cooked it properly, so it kind of tasted like plastic, so that wasn't very good, but we had actual homemade lasagna the other night, and you know what? That was, that was epic. Um, oh yeah, if you don't know what I'm doing right now, so what I have done over on the side over here, so I have a whole layer for my color. I'm just going to keep these same layers, by the way. I'll merge it all at the end, but like I only use three layers. I'll just have everything on the same layers. So all of my lines will be dedicated to this layer. All of my color dedicated to this layer. All of my sketch dedicated to this layer. Um, but what I've done right now is I have it set to protect alpha. If I remove it, nothing changes, but... Um, if I have it on, then I can't color outside the lines. If I turn it off, then I can color outside the lines again. Um, so I'm just going to keep that on while I work this way. I might shade this a little bit for fun. So I can show you how a clipping mask works. You tried uploading your server and it worked with some reason with my server. I don't know then, man. That's, that's a... I don't know. <laughs> I ain't no Discord. Uh, thing. You may want to just ask our our um friends over in the server. Oh, but I guess I can do this now. So if you haven't, you know, seen our server, if you've never been in our Discord server, or if you don't know what we're doing, feel free to join us. I think that turned on the prompt. Hopefully it did. I clicked the numbers. I guess we'll see if it worked. Um, but yes, if you have. Oh, it did. Wonderful. Um, but yeah, if you've never been our server, that's in the link down below if you'd like to join us on our Discord server. And you can talk to myself or Alyssa via text, share your work, get to know the studio, and meet other fellow art nerds. It's a nice little chill community we have in there. It's not so, it's not too intense. Welcome to your first time, Gerald Adams. Gerald Adams? Hello. Obama, should Michelle dye her hair? I have dyed hair. Do it. <laughs> Alright, I'll show off how to use a clipping mask so I can, I'll shade this a little bit. So, when you are shading, if you're doing like, uh, anything, just like, if you're doing any kind of shading, um, I mainly work with cell shading. So what you can do is you can create a new layer. I'm just going to name it, uh... As H for shading. And what you can do is you can turn on this little thing over here that says clipping. You'll see it move in a little bit, and now it's clipped to this layer underneath. I'm going to switch back to the G pen. But now, when I'm working on this layer, it won't exit. I can't color outside the lines, but it's also a separate layer, so I can remove it if I want and erase it. Clipping is really, really useful, especially when you have tons and tons of effects or whatever. Medibang doesn't have a crazy amount of effects. Um, if you're wondering, I mainly work in Photoshop, um, but it has enough. It has enough to for it to work, you know. Let's just shade him a little bit. Oh, you know what? Actually, let's make... Let's do a different method. Let's... Oops. Let's add a little bit of light to it. Yeah. Instead. Yeah. Okay. So he's kind of fading away in the background there. 
Michelle would look great with pink or blue hair. Honestly, pink pink was my very first color that I did myself. I dye my own hair, so like pink was a really fun one. Blue is what I have for a really, really long time too. Um, the pen is so satisfying. It is, yeah. Um, could you explain further what you mean by effects, like tools? Not really. So effects is like the um, you see this little thing over here. It says blending. Your effects are there's a t like okay, there's a ton of things that you can do with effects. Effects is just like a very broad spectrum. So if I were to just create a whole new layer, let's say that I just filled this whole thing in orange, it's gonna look like I'm ruining everything, but I'm not. So if I click this, oh, actually, let's turn that to reference the layer. There we go. So if I just fill this in, I can change this blending mode to like multiply. So this would be like a multiply effect and it adds on like another layer of color. I could change it to overlay and that'll like make everything more. Or actually, I kind of like the way that looks. <laughs> I might keep that. <laughs> Let's just merge that down to my... I'm just going to make that here. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, I might... Uh... Let's merge those, actually. Because I like the way that looks. Um, but yeah, your effects can be like the way that your layer is. Um, sorry, I'm testing a couple things for a second. Because my, my keyboard sucks. Ugh, okay, hang on. Control C, Control V. There we go. Oh, it unlocked it. Oh, oh well. I guess I can't keep this then. All right, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so that could be like your layer styles. Um, up at the top here, it also has filter. And you'll see all these different things. Levels, hue, tonal curve, chromatic aberration, reverse color, unsharp, Gaussian blur, motion blur, lens blur. All of these are also considered effects. So like, it's it's you just got to play around with a lot of them. Gaussian blur is a lot of people's favorite. Motion blur is great for memes. Um... <laughs> But yeah, there's a ton of different things. Levels and hue and tonal curve are all for like fixing your your values and your color. Um, but these are all like blurs. These are just like special effects, stuff like that. I have a list of questions to ask small streamers to give them more chat participation. Could you think? I could ask you some questions. Depends on what they are. As long as they're like PG. Do you have any tips on shading? I'm struggling to know where I have to shade. Really when you're shading. I'm also going to start on the next creature by the way. Here's my little planter bug guy. I'm going to move on to. I should actually remove this folder. I don't need it anymore. Um, I'm going to start on the. Who was it? I think it was a. Washi tape? Oh no. There was Lysol spray that was added first. Oh, I'm excited for that one, actually. Um, yeah, for shading, really, it's about finding your um, light source first. So you have to figure out where the light is coming from, how far away it is, how close it is. Um, when it's closer, your shadows will be sharper. When it's farther away, your shadows will be softer. Um, but it is also finding out what things protrude out from whatever you're drawing and how the shadow will be cast. So if you have, like... Say if you have like a brick here or like a block and then you have like a a little thing popping out from here. Your light source is coming from up here. Obviously there's going to be a shadow coming out from beneath this thing, right? You're probably going to have a shadow over here. This whole brick is probably going to cast a shadow this way, right? It depends on where, you know, your light source is. If your light was coming from, say down here, then your shadow might be up here and there's going to be some darkness here or whatever right it depends on where everything is right it's really just figuring out where that light source is and what will block that light and what causes shadows great thanks for clarifying this They're so neat no worries um default shortcuts in medibang are so bad i usually hold shift and drag my cursor right to increase the size of the brush and vice versa holding spacebar for panning etc see i don't do any of that i'm so used to like using all the buttons on the side um because photoshop has like buttons for everything but it's not the same for everybody. This is Maybank? Yes. What do you think of the goal of humanity should be? Realizing that humanity is built off of... Um, the goal of humanity should be realizing our own mistakes and learning to improve them. 
But again, what is a mistake? You gotta, like, you know, that's all about self-morality. And you know what? We're not gonna talk about morality on this stream because I'm just not gonna stop talking if I keep doing that. Um, how do you approach line artless line art? Uh, line artless art so like lineless um i love working lineless lineless is um i for me because I, I do digital painting a lot um what i always do is i have a layer for i <laughs> a lot of my paintings only have three layers so again like a crazy low amount so i usually always have one layer for the sketch one layer for the color i merge them and then i have one layer on top of that um for all of my flat colors um or for all my colors a lot of the times for when I'm working lineless though, just like not, not like painted, um, spray bottle. Sorry. I'm looking up a reference off the side as well, because I don't know what a spray bottle looks like. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I can have fun with this. Let me change this then. Um, I'd recommend doing the sketch first and then working shape by shape. If you're really scared of making mistakes, you can make a different layer as per color. Um, some people do that. I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. Um, but that takes a lot of shortcutting as well. Kind of learning how certain shapes work and having a memorization towards them. Hello, hello, Adriana LaRusso. Um, no worries, Katie. Hello, Gio. Welcome. And Gio is, our, is another lovely member of the Wing Canvas team. Hello, welcome in. Glad you could join. Join this mess of a stream. <laughs> um, it looks like a beak. I always thought that the little, like, um, I think it's called pareidolia when you see, like, faces in certain things. That'll help a lot when it comes to character design, actually, or creature design. If you can point out the pareidolia. Um... Oh, you know what I can do? Because there's a... Yes! Okay. I thought there's, like... I can attach, like, feet onto this. The bottle can be its tank. And the little spray thingy can be the rest of its body. Yes! There we go. Let's get it. So it's almost like it's a little fish coming out of the tank, you know? And you can refill the water. It needs water to survive, but it doesn't want to be submerged all the time. It's like a plant. Kind of like that. Yes. Let's go. Okay. Hello. It really doesn't like it when I move too fast. I'm so used. What's my goal in art? Um, I'd actually, initially it was to be a game artist. I, I've kind of grown from that though. I really want to um, work in comics, like professionally. I'll, I'll draw with, um, the pen brush now so it'll work with a really sharp one um oh do i have pressure bypass no i don't okay good I'll turn up my correction um but yeah i think i want to go into professional comic arts i i do have a web comic but like i don't it's not like crazy popular or anything it's just more like a fun thing uh, right now Correction some more. Um, so I used to line art because it gives me the foundation for shading, depth, and volume, which I found really hard to do in line artless piece. Yeah, it takes a bit to get used to. I'm a very big line art person as well. Um, it just gets kind of, you get used to it over time, I think. It's just like you kind of learn where everything is, where all the shapes are. But you got to get used to it. Like, of course, it's like a, it's a really big practice thing. I know a lot of small artists hate it when big artists are like, eh, I'm not a big artist. Um, but like when we're quote-unquote experienced artists are like, oh, you go to practice. But it, it's true. It's so true. Like, if you're, you're not going to get anywhere if you don't practice, man. You can't just expect to look at a tutorial once and go like, oh, yeah, no, I'm a professional. You got you to gotta work with it, you know? I guess everyone's just here different answers. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, you, ah, yes, get it. The best feeling when ideas come together. Right? <laughs> Lies all seahorse. What's the webcomic? My webcomic is called Say Hello Grayson. Um, it's on Instagram, but it's under my... Uh, it's under my uh, social media name. If you join our Discord, I can probably give it to you there. Um, I just don't really want to say it on stream. But um, just in case. Um, but 
if you join our Discord, let's do that plug again, boys. If you join our Discord, you can come to see it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, you can come chat with all of us in the Wing Canvas server. Come see us. Come see our art, bro. Like, come come join us. We're nice and chill over in the studio. You know what I mean? You feel that. I feel that. Let's get it. Um, yeah, it's on my IG. Um, not crazy popular, humble brag. I'm really not. I'm not... <laughs> I'm really not that crazy popular. Like, my main account on Instagram isn't that popular. The only reason, like, I have, like, a fair amount on Twitter is because, like, I draw... I drew Hunter Hunter for fan art for a really long time. I've kind of grown out of it, but I still love Hunter Hunter, and don't get me started. Um, I like how everyone has this really overcomplicated OCs, and you're just so simple yet original. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, I'm assuming that some of you came from my IG then. Hello. Welcome. Um... I, yeah, I, I, sometimes I wish I had more complicated OCs, but then, like, I'm such a simple, I'm a very simple kind of character person, so, like, or that's kind of, like, how, what I default to in design. I'm not a very overcomplicated individual. The creativity, there's a comic series. Thank you, Renia. Benny Boy Gamer, hello. Dropping in to say thank you for teaching me how to use Medibang. No worries. Honestly, we learn together, man. I, <laughs> I love to give secrets of how videos were made. So if you want to know how I did that Medibank video, a lot of it was me just kind of um, messing around with it and then figuring out how things worked. But a lot of it was also prior knowledge from using Photoshop a lot. Um, it's an amazing comic series. Thank you, Chiel. You're crazy popular with this. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> uh, the joys of writing it. You know what sucks about writing a smart character is that I like it sucks to write a smart character when you're not smart and then you have to sit there and like like ask your friends like hey does this sound right? <laughs> a lot of the times I don't I still don't know if it does. It's like oh well I guess I'll figure I'll figure out if it's okay the next day. All of my typos as well. I need to redo a lot of things in that comic to be honest. Um Art equals visual communication, which is more powerful and immediate than words. Very true. Um, especially when doing character designing. Um, I always talk what within my... <laughs> let's have another plug, boys. <laughs> within my art mentorship class, which you can get more information from, with the links down below. If you want to look in our stream description, hey, that's where we can see the Wing Canvas website. And on there, you'll be able to see all the different classes that I teach. Um, <laughs> Um, but I have a couple of our mentorship classes. Right now, only one is running. Um, I think we're going to merge all of them soon. But, like, my um, my current art mentorship, um, one of them is comic artwork, or comics and manga. Um, and I teach, like, you know, the basics of comic art and manga and whatever. Um, and one thing that I always tell my students is you should always um, focus on your visual language. Your visual language is very much like... Um, it's, it's what you mentioned, you know, you look at something and immediately have some kind of preconceived notion about what they are, or who they are, and their personality. And that visual, um, what's it called? Your, your visual language and your visual storytelling is so important when it comes to both area design and character design and all that. Okay, Manibang is not... Hello? Can you not do that to me for a second? It doesn't like when I do really long lines when I'm streaming. I'm sorry, I gotta I gotta be quiet for a second. Just I can. Come on. Cause it does it does that weird thing. Okay, sure. I'll go with it. Um but yeah, your visual language is so important. You could also have like um what's it called? Like an ironic character design where they're visual appearance doesn't match their personality or who they are as a person. I love ironic character design. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, big, my, my favorite thing is always like big intimidating things that are like actually very kind. Um, very kind and sweet and kind of like shy. Um, or very small cute things that are very angry and like mean and whatever. But it, it depends on the person. Um, but yeah. Is a bottle trigger a tongue or really huge buck teeth? I was, I, for me, it kind of looks like a beak. That's how I'm thinking. I'm thinking it kind of looks like a beak to me. Oh, you know what? Then I should probably add on a second layer. Thank you for pointing that out. Because 
Yeah, it feels like a beak to me. Like, kind of like a duck. Like a big duck. You ever see that? Like, if you look at a spray bottle, now you'll only see them as ducks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've ruined spray bottles for y'all forever. Um... Used to work on Krita, but it put a lot of stress on my PC, so you started using Medibank. Now my PC is not overheating the liner to smooth. Yeah. Um, I tried to use Krita. I'm not a huge Krita fan. You'll you'll learn that about me. I'm not a huge Krita fan. <laughs> you can to each their own. You can work with whatever you want, man. But like, I'm not a huge Krita person. Okay. Here, I can show you my magic wand trick now. So you see that right now? Oh, I should set it to two. So, right now. Um, I have my expand on my magic wand set to two. I can select on the outside of my line work. If I hit control shift I, it'll inverse it. So now everything on the inside of that is selected. I'm not going to hit paint bucket because it's going to fill in this, but I could paint bucket. It, but what I'm going to do is just, excuse me. Oh, it's because I protect Elton. Whoops. Um, but yeah, now I can fill this whole thing in. Nice and easy. And I can hit Control D to deselect, and now I have that whole thing colored in. Turn protect alpha back on. No win, no want, no worry. Nice and easy. And I could paint bucket in every single little aspect of this as well. Like if I wanted to I make sure my reference is on the canvas, I could paint bucket in certain areas as well. Oops. Actually, that's faster. I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, that's where I came across the channel. Hey! I'm glad you stayed, bro. It does look like the beak. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have a... We don't have a commands thing. It's, <laughs> it's not that... It's We're not that crazy savvy on here. This isn't like Twitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lysol. You can't see what I'm drawing because of the social media thing. Oh, it's still on. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't realize I didn't turn it off. I'm so sorry. Um, it should be off now. If it's not, let me know. But, um, oh my god. I forgot to turn it off. I'm so sorry. I thought I did. Sorry about that. I don't even know how long that's been up for. Um, <laughs> rip me, I guess. Um. Oh, you know what? That should be red. Let's make this red so it really looks more like a Lysol spray bottle. Yeah, let's get it. I guess I'll shade this one a little bit, too. Feel free to keep on dropping in... Um. What's it called? Suggestions as well for items. I just turned on the opacity a little bit so it kind of looks like the water's affecting it. The water, whatever this is. Oops, let's turn this down even more. Yeah, that's better. Um, about a minute, okay. <laughs> That's still a minute too long. Ripping pieces. It's okay. It's all right. So be it, I suppose. One of my favorite things to render out is uh, fur or like hay or whatever. I love rendering that stuff out. It's very fun to me. Because you just use little, little ticks. Probably not going to do that, but, uh, oh well. Let me show you a different way to shade. So this one was with just flat colors. Um, so this one I'm going to use a multiply layer instead. So I'm going to color in everything dark blue. This is a really fast way to shade. Oh, whoops. This is a really fast way to shade. Um, but it, it does have its disadvantages. So I'll talk about those once I finish this bit. Um... But yeah, it looks like I'm ruining it. Just don't worry. Just trust me for a second. Um, so for, I don't remember who asked, um, but for right now, I'm thinking that my light source is coming from kind of over here. So all of my, 
objects that are being covered by something else are going to have a bit of a shadow on them like this, you know? Yeah, so if my light is kind of coming from here, then there'll be shadow on this side. You know what I mean? Yeah, so let's just fill in this color for now. Let's just be kind of lazy. There we go. I'm a very uh, geometric shader. I like to have like very harsh edges with my with my shadows, even though they don't always fit the the shape. It's just a very stylistic choice. Um, but when you have all this color filled in, what you can do is on the side over here, you can see this. It's uh, on your layer window. It says blending. Change your blending to multiply. Nope, that's add. Change your blending to multiply, and you can turn down the opacity. Boom. Quick shadows. Easy. <laughs> It has its disadvantages, like um, if you're going for more, oops, oops, oops. if you're going for more advanced shading, um, then you can't add uh, what's it called, subsurface scattering or anything like that because it doesn't really work with this. You're gonna have to merge it all and then figure it out. Um, there's a subtractive way to shade that makes it easier, but it's a little harder to do on Medibang, so I won't do that. But let's do the next object. I think it was washi tape that was mentioned next. I don't know why everything is facing to the left. Let's let's do something facing to the right. Let's do washi tape. Um. Just a moment. The heinous that you want is a chair furniture in your room. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to work with. <laughs> and you would know what we were talking about if you came onto our Wing Canvas Discord channel to see where I <laughs> get. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, it's the last time I'll make that joke. Um, but if you come onto our Wing Canvas Discord channel, then you can come and see, you know, some of my whips, some of Alyssa's whips, some of the other artists in our channel's whips. Um, and you'll see what we do sometimes. Um Yeah, alright. Your art will become a fine addition to my collection. As long as you don't repost it. I'm totally cool with that. I don't care about saves, y'all. Just don't don't repost it. Don't repost artists' work, man. You, if you want free art, do it yourself. If you want clout, just do it yourself, man. Um, Alright, what was it? Washi tape. I think washi tape was next. I'm kind of thinking... You know what I'm kind of thinking? I'm thinking... I'm thinking a couple things, yeah? I'm thinking kind of like... <clears throat> I'm thinking a couple things. I'm thinking of like a snake, but I don't want to keep on doing long ones. I kind of want to... <clears throat> I'm kind of thinking, you know what? Let's make a... Let's make some cute ones. Let's do a cute one. I'm kind of feeling... I'm feeling more bugs. I'm feeling more bees. What if... What if... Because a lot of people use the hole as a... Oh, if I were to make it, <gasps> genius! So, if you don't, if you've never seen me before, if you never met me. Actually, a lot of you haven't met me. But if you've never like, <laughs> if you don't know anything about me, my big like, as much as as easily obsessed as I will get with everything else, nothing will ever beat my love for Kirby. Okay, I have a really big love of Kirby. I just thought of like in Kirby's Epic Yarn that one enemy. Yeah, it's like a it's like a yarn ball, but like they converted it into a snail. Like that's such a fun design. I'm thinking that. I'm thinking like a washi tape snail. So like, you know, the two antenna are like the it's like a piece of the tape that's cut in like half. You can have you can have like if it's like a flower washi tape. You can have a bit of flower up on the top. Oh, so it's like fluffy. Yes. Let's go. I'll I'll make this look nicer. Don't worry. I'm gonna draw more than one because there's a lot of different washi tape patterns. I'm gonna. Oh, I have washi tape on the side over here. Let's reference my own washi tape. I'm gonna use. I have a flower one. Oh, you know what? Let's use this one. This one's like a fun little Japanese pattern. I'll do that. <laughs> Ah oh, yes, my favorite way to shade real quick. Multiply, yeah. That's what shit I do. They steal art. Just like to watch, I felt. <laughs> Only villains do that. <laughs> this. Heroes do this. Never do this. Only villains do that. Um, a snail's genius. Thank you. I was originally going to do a bee, and then I thought more bugs, and then snails. I'm going to do snails. Hello, Yuri. Welcome in. <laughs> Just the LOL, LOL, LOL. I understand completely. 
I'm checking my time. I'm like 12.46. We were around the third ones. I think I'm going to do... I want to do a few of these snails. Because these are really cute, actually. <laughs> They're kind of like bunnies, actually. They're a little bit like bunnies. I'm sorry if you keep hearing me hit my, uh, my headset, by the way. I have to keep readjusting it. Because <laughs> sometimes it slips off my, my head. Hang on, sorry. I'm readjusting it right now. <laughs> I also have earrings, so they, like, kind of bump into them sometimes. Feel free, again, feel free to keep on dropping in suggestions. Just tell me some random objects, man. I love just, like, the less prepared I am, the better. <laughs> When it comes to designing, I find that, like, I work the best under that kind of condition. Oh, yes, and then I can do the... Oh, that's so cute. It kind of looks like onions. <laughs> Even though they're not onions. It's this kind of pattern. Yeah, you ever seen those? I love those. You ever seen, like, scarves like this on, like, a... What's it called? Uh, a Shiba? Like a Shiba Inu? This is so cute. I love those dogs. I think my favorite dog is a... Uh... Well, I really like Pomeranians, but I really like, um, oh my god, what are they called? A, sh uh, a Pomsky, if you've never seen one of those. P-O-M-S-K-Y, a Pomsky. It's a Pomeranian husky. Think of, like, a, a husky puppy, but it stays like that forever. Isn't that, cute? like, that's so cute. Like, it, <laughs> if you've never seen one of those, it's so good. These are adorable. I can't wait to see them in the pattern. Thank you, Renia. Speakers, headphones, webcams, cyborg creatures. Oh, you found my weakness. I'm so bad at <laughs> electronics, but I will do them um, if I get to them. I do have a laptop as a as a um. I do have a laptop as a request, so I will do that as well. But I, speakers actually could be fun. I might. Oh, headset. If I do my headset, if you're wondering what my headset is, I have the Razer Kraken kitties. So I have like the the LED like cat ears on the top of my head. They're pink. Um, but. Yes, I will. I will see gladly. I think I'm gonna stick with my rough liner because I kind of like the way that looks. Um, I I can also finish it a little bit faster. Um, Shiba Inu. Yes, I love Shibas. There's like Yuri. There's like three Shibas in my area. There's like family. So many Shibas in my area. So many people have Shiba Inus in like my neighborhood. It's so cute. I see them all the time. Like when people walk their dogs. There's a lot of Shibas. There's a couple Corgis. I think there's a couple German Shepherds as well, just in my neighborhood. All the cute dogs are in my neighborhood. It's so great. Somebody has a uh, a something something Eskimo. I don't remember. I don't remember exactly what the thing is. It's like a white fluffy dog. It's the same dog that Jack's Films has. <laughs> Actually, he has three of them, but still. Where do you live? I can't really dox myself on stream, Yuri. I can't <laughs> I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> Yuri is another one of our lovely instructors here at Wayne Canvas. Um, Yuri teaches animation. Um, I believe it's Beginner's Animation Animation Mentorship. Um, but yes, Yuri is another one of our lovely instructors. Have y'all ever heard of... Sorry, I'm drawing snails. But, like, have y'all ever heard of... Because, like, I'm thinking about snails. Y'all ever heard a snail eat? Like, have you ever heard a snail, like, crunch on lettuce? It's so... It's so cute. Like, they just... They just crunch. Delicious. If you've never heard it, go watch a video. After... After the stream. But go watch a video. <laughs> go watch a video of a snail eating lettuce. Or just, like, food in general. It's so good, because it's like the smallest crunch. I'm trying to be kind of careful. But I like to work fast, so I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, the slowness I can't do, <laughs> I can't. I must be speed. We trying to be like Sonic out here. 
Yeah, my favorite video game series is Kirby. Like, I've never... I, I love a lot of video games, but Kirby is, like, my lifelong love. I think, I think the biggest shame is that Sonic Boom, in terms of the video games, were so bad but the show is so funny like it's so it's so like unfortunate like the, <laughs> the apple bunny on japanese bento oh you're right oh my god that made this design 20 times better thank you yuri oh i shouldn't be lining these flowers i should just make them as like color yeah you know what i'm gonna get rid of all these I'll just color them in. I don't wanna I don't wanna line this whole thing. It'll actually be faster if I work with just color as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you gotta pick and choose what you wanna line and what you're just gonna do in color. Um lines will bring attention to certain um things, but your like lines will bring attention to certain areas, but if you use the lines too much that it can end up looking busy like really really busy so it's probably best to pick and choose what details you want to line and which ones you don't um what you want when you're designing anything is you should have resting spots so one thing that i've been told is like um if you have so much detail it, when you have too much detail sometimes it's like there's no detail at all so it's like you know if you if you add way too much then it can look way too muddy or it doesn't nothing really stands out you know um in like a single things design right you should kind of have some area where you know you're looking and it's like oh there's whatever you should have a focal point so whatever has like less if you have a very high detail piece whatever has the least amount of detail will stand out the most and vice versa if you have like a very low detail piece whatever has the most detail will stand out the most that's called emphasis. So if you have different areas to emphasize on a piece, you gotta kind of pick and choose what those emphasis areas will be. Control C for the win. Yeah, really, right? Um, I don't know what the cap is on Medibang for Control Z. I hope you can change it, kind of like how you can on Photoshop. Um, I keep on going back to it. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, I hope that you can you can cap it. You know what I mean? Um, or like you can change what it caps to because it's so useful when you can, uh, it's so useful when you can like change the amount because it can change like how much RAM your whole program uses or how much, yeah, how much RAM, how much memory the program uses. Like my Photoshop undo, I think is set to 200, so I can undo 200 times, which is perfectly enough for me, but some people set it all the way to a thousand. 2000 something like that like that's it uses up so much memory so like don't do that but <laughs> oh i have some of the shadow from up there oh yes i guess that's a good way to show this off so if because your um your shading layer will be like it's only because it's clipped to this layer below the rest of the color will only reveal will only be revealed once you color in the area around it um, so it, like your clipping mask will only show up, like if you have some excess on the sides, so there's probably going to be excess here. Yeah. It'll only show up when you actually add color onto there, if that makes sense. So you might see the, the excess of your shading if you, <laughs> if you shade a little too close, but that's okay. Um, Yeah. Oh, yep, there's some more of the shading from the layer up top, or from my little, my bug planter. I'm going to do the multiply thing again, just because it's a little bit easier. Um... It also works with it works very very effectively especially if you're like trying to go fast. I like to whatever color you choose for your multiply shadows by the way is up to you. For me I tend to use a dark blue 
some kind of blue. Um, it depends on the piece, though. Sometimes I use an orange. It depends on how, like, um, warm I want it to be, how cold I want it to be, etc., etc. But that depends on the actual piece itself, sometimes. Am I watching any anime these days? Um, I think the only one that I've watched recently is Hunter x Hunter. And then, like, the amount of anime that I've been recommended, because I teach cartooning and anime, they're always like, oh, just so you gotta watch this, just so you gotta watch that. Listen, man, I would. <laughs> I really would. But I, I can't at the moment. Um, unfortunately. Um, but I'm gonna do another trick here. Here's another way to make your shadows look kind of nice, is if you erase a little bit okay why is this so it's so powerful it really doesn't need to be this powerful yeah if you erase a little bit of it it kind of looks nice depends on what you're working with though as well um yeah the most recent one i watched is hunter hunter yuri knows that yuri knows that if she gets me started on hunter hunter i'll never stop talking so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that to myself at the moment hello thank you I think I pressed two. Let's go back to that then. Um, I think undo 10 to 15 times of the was just take it as a sign to restart my drawing whatever stage I'm on. I understand. <laughs> 10 to 15 undos. Yeah, that's you know what? That's reasonable. I can I can see that. Let's turn up my correction real quick. Oh, Medibang doesn't like it when I use the correction. Uh, this laptop is not good, guys. This, <laughs> it used to be good. It's okay. I'll live. For now, I'll live. I've had it for four-ish years. She's done me well. One anime that every single student of mine has, like, or not every single student, but a lot of students of mine have recommended that I watch is, um, actually there's two. There's Bungo Stray Dogs and there's Banana Fish. Those two are people have recommended to me. Another one that people have recommended to me is, um, Toilet Bound hanako because they're like, oh, you'll like Hanako. He's going to be, like, a favorite character of yours. And I'm like, I've seen the designs. They're very cute. And I'm like, uh, I probably will. <laughs> but me too at anime recommendations, yes. If you don't know... Um, if you haven't been to any of our other streams, Alyssa is one of the other cartooning and anime teachers, along with me. Um, so we get a lot of the anime lovers, but, you know, that's okay. It's why we teach it. <laughs> um, whoops. Hello? Oh, what? That's wild. Okay, so Medibang, I guess doesn't when you erase unlike on photoshop when you erase it just straight up gets rid of the thing so it doesn't fill it in with white it just erases the whole thing that's wild all right i didn't know that Oh, sorry, I think I hit my mic. Uh, yeah, snail bunnies. They kind of look like bunnies now that I'm actually drawing them. <laughs> they look a little bit like bunnies. That's okay. I like gold. Let's go with like a yellow. A yellow and pink kind of theme. Let's go with a pastel yellow pink. I'm going to do some blue, too, because I like to have the trio of colors. Coming with up with palettes has, like, a, it's, you got to kind of have a knowledge of color theory. I mean, you don't have to. Um, I, <laughs> oh, some of my teachers will kill me for saying that. Um, you don't have to. It's A lot of it is kind of figuring out which colors look nice together. Of course, there's, um, you can use color theory to understand why they look good together. But personally, I think a lot of it is kind of figuring out which colors you think look nice. Um... Try not to work with eye strain too much. If you're an eye strain person, don't work with it too much. I think that it's a, a it's a fun kind of stylization, but I think that you should know how to do it, how to work with colors without eye strain as well. Oops, let's use let's use this one. 
Nah, it feels a little too Lisa Frankie for me. Let's... Ah, let's go. That's what it is. Ah, uh, yes. Don't forget to... <laughs> let's do that plug again, boys. Don't forget to like this stream follow us on our socials that's on instagram and if any of you any of you use facebook i don't know if any of you use facebook um but if you're on facebook then hey we're on there too and if you're one of the if you're a cool epic gamer you can join us on discord as well <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> you don't have to be an epic gamer jesse do i have a favorite pokemon oh yes i love noivern noivern's my favorite one for a really long time, it was Pikachu. When I was really young, I really loved uh, Glaceon as well. My favorite Pokemon of all time is Noivern, though. I love dragon types. Um, I love Noivern. I think when I first got Noivern, uh, she was a girl, and I had her... I named her Noria. I think that was what I named her. I always named my Pokemon, every game that I got. Um, yes, my favorite Pokemon is Noivern. Um, I really liked Superior for a really long time. My very first game was Pokemon Black. Um, Pokemon Black and White was my very first game. Um, it's really funny. So that was my first game. My second game was Pokemon Soul Silver. Third game was Pokemon Platinum. So I went backwards for a bit. And then it was Pokemon X and Y. And then from there, it was just all current. When it first came out, everybody hated Pokemon Black and White, by the way. Like, if you're not, um, hang on, let me just save this for a second. Um, if you're not, like, a... What's it called? If you're not old enough <laughs> to know what it was like, um, when we... When Black and White first came out, that's what it was. So it was, like, everybody hated Pokemon Black and White. And I was like, but why? It's so good. But now people love it. They're like, oh, it's such a nostalgia trip. I'm like, of course it is. Now that it's old, you like it. Um... I love the pastels. Does this count as a triadic color palette? It does, because it is technically still pink, blue, and yellow. Good work. Yes. <laughs> it is a triadic, technically. Um, triadic palettes are generally used for more toyish um, kitty things, because they're very bright. And they're very bold. Um, but triadic, um, you can work very nicely with triadic. I, I quite like triadic, but my favorites still are contrasty. Um, if you watch the color video, that's also me. Um, but my... <laughs> I, I do love working with um complementary colors. I love dragon type only because they're able to do many types of attack like fire, water, electric, flying, everything. Yes. I love dragon types just for their designs. I love dragons. When I was younger, my nickname was the, the dragon lady. Um, I am going to change the canvas size because I want to make it longer. Let's go with 3100. Oh, that might have switched my... Uh, my display. That's okay. <laughs> I think it switched back now. Can I move multiple? Yes, I can. Let's go. Um, what was next? I think it was... Yeah, I'm sorry. I was changing the canvas size. I'm, I'm looking at it now and it's like wild. Um, let's see. What was next? I had the washi tape... Oh, yes. Computer or laptop. Let's do my laptop because my laptop hates me. I guess I'll work with mechs. <laughs> my weakness. I'm so bad with mechs. If you've, like, it takes me so long. So this one might take me longer. Um, oh, man. Yeah, laptop. Let's do a laptop. Uh, what am I thinking? Let's, let's think about... What does a laptop look like? It does kind of look like a giant alligator mouth, doesn't it? Like, if you have, like, the keys. Ooh. I could do a spider. I could do, like, a weird wired spider. Because I have, a like, a bajillion wires coming off of my laptop. I could do that. I also have a bajillion stickers all over my laptop. <laughs> uh... Oh, I have an idea. Okay. So if we have, like... If I have the laptop. Yeah, I could use the screen to my advantage. Because if it's a screen, then that means that I can have anything I want on it. Is my correction still on? Yeah, let's turn that off. Hey, turn off. There we go. Um, yeah, let's work with that. So then, like, because the cool thing with anything with a screen is that you can take advantage of that. One of my childhood things, by the way, was Transformers. If you never, like, 
I love Transformers as a kid. I'm just very upset about the Michael Bay films. Um, but that's a conversation for another day. Oh, by the way, it's 107. <laughs> I guess I should have mentioned that. Um, that means that we have about 53 minutes left. So that's like, because uh, we run these streams until like 2 o'clock, I think. So if you have any last minute suggestions, I'm going to be doing all the different ones that I've seen so far. Um, ooh, I could do. Oh, I have a better idea. Let's not use. Let's not do it this way. Yeah, again, like I mentioned kind of in the beginning, keep up that uh the what if factor. It'll help a lot. You don't think you have a favorite type, but you do love Groom, Snarl, Snarl, and Lux, right? Yes. Uh, on your last uh, stream, you mentioned. Honestly, I'm going to be legit. I'm assuming that Grim Snarl is a new one, because I, I don't know what Grim Snarl looks like. I might, but I'm not 100% sure. I just, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not 100%. Like, I kind of, I think I know. Kind of. Maybe. Yeah, if we have this upside down, and then I can have the USB cords... Be tentacles. Let's go. Sea creatures. I have a very big love of sea creatures, too, if you don't know. I, I, which is ironic, because I have a fear of swimming. <laughs> Let's use my terrible three, my th terrible dual-pronged Cintiq cord, because I hate this thing. I love the Cintiq, but I just, I hate this cord. <laughs> it's so intense, and it's proprietary. It costs so much to get. Now it looks kind of like tentacles. And I can have one connected over here. That can be like... I'm actually going to switch way. Switch this around for a second. Nope, but... There we go. Yeah, let's move this over here. I'll reorganize these later. They're all kind of a mess right now. Uh, bookends. Oh, I love bookends. Hello, my name's Jeff. These creatures are adorable. Thank you. My name's Jeff. That's an old meme. Very good. <laughs> let's make it this way so we can have like a cuttlefish. Oh, it's like a cuttlefish. Let's go. We have like a, like a cuttlefish kind of deal. And we can have a... We can have it so then, like, the webcam. You can have a plug-in webcam. And that can be... But, like, one of those old ones that are, like, a circle. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. This laptop makes no sense. It's okay. <laughs> it's not technically a laptop. We're going creatures. And just for fun, I'll add a couple of robotic legs. Practicality is a really big thing when it comes to creature design as well. Like, usually you want your creature designs to have some kind of practicality, especially if it's fauna. Um, when I say fauna, I mean the animals, like wildlife. Um, because a lot of, if you look at actual animals in real life, a lot of their quote-unquote design or their biology is made up of very practical things. It usually helps with their environment or whatever. Um, like, very bright animals are usually because they're poisonous, so it wards off predators. Um... What other animals can I think of? Um, the fennec fox, its feet are padded with uh, fur, so then they don't... Um, it's one of the only canines with fur on their feet, so then they don't you know, feel the effects of the desert heat on the bottoms of their feet. Um, there's a certain type of snake that can fly. If you didn't know that, actually, there is a snake that can like expand its body. It, it climbs trees, and then if it wants to jump from tree to tree, it flattens out its body. It has the ability to flatten out its body, and it like flies in the sky like a kite. It's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it, it, you usually want some kind of practicality. Like Sometimes you can just kind of do whatever we want, um, but usually that's what it happens with design. Even the creepy centipede planter. I can go creepier. 
If you are creepy, I can go creepy. If you didn't know, if you guys don't know, I'm actually a, I'm a horror artist. <laughs> I do like to do creepy stuff, but like, of course, I'm not gonna, it's, it's, I gotta keep it PG on here. But, um, I can do creepy. I can do very creepy, but I won't do that for stream. Um, the dark fairy, green, purple, goblin, troll looking one, sword shield. Newer. Grips. Oh! It's that thing that you find in the fairy forest. Yeah, and then you evolve it from the tiny one. The tiny goblin guy. Yes. Okay. I was thinking of somebody else then. My <laughs> my brain. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I know who that is then. <laughs> my brain. I yeah. I don't the newer Pokemon. I I love Pokemon, but I don't know the newer ones that well. Unless if I actually had them on my team, I don't know them that well. <laughs> who was on my team? I had a Corviknight. I had a Nicket. Um, that evolved. I don't remember what the evolution is. I had a a Yamper that evolved into the Boltund. Uh, I had a, a Wooloo that evolved in, into, um, I don't even remember the evolution's name. It's like, I remember it as Wooloo, and then I, I named it Alabaster, which is a type of white. It's like a white color. All of my Pokemon were named after colors. And I don't remember what the evolution is called. <laughs> Let's go. This tentacle monster, <laughs> this tentacle demon. What is happening here? This is kind of wild. Actually, I think these should go on the other side. I'm thinking about it now. I could use the headphone jack. But then that doesn't really make any sense. I have lights under here. Ooh, I have lights under there. I can mess around with that. I could. I also don't want to. Um. You know what? Sometimes less is more. I'll leave it at that. Let's leave it at that then. You watch your my Medicore. I know that means Medibang. I watch my Medibang Paint Pro tutorial. It helped me so much. Thanks. I'm glad it helped. I didn't know what I was doing, but I'm glad it helped so many people. <laughs> Medicore is such like it's such a <laughs> it's so it's kind of cool sounding. It's like I'm a very big um weird core person. If you know what that is, I I doubt half the people on here know what that is. But like I love like that kind of stuff but like medicore sounds so funky like i know that the the medibang um users call themselves the medi gang but like medicore sounds so much cooler i'm, I'm just gonna put it out there <laughs> medicore that's so good going a little bit thinner for this one i guess i'm gonna do another electronic after this it's 115 okay that's plenty of time Why did I say Medicore? I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, what's it called? Autocorrect? I don't know. <laughs> Autocorrect hates us all. The Medigang. No, legit. Like, I've ever, I've seen, like, Medibang users call themselves the Medigang. I just, like, on different Discord servers I'm in or on, like, a, on Twitter or whatever, they call themselves the Medigang. Which is so funny to me. Twitter hates Photoshop, by the way. Like, I know, I know that it's, like, industry standard and it, Adobe sucks for costing so much, but, like, I don't mind Photoshop that bad. I will get, I will get, like, canceled when I say that. Um, anyway, but, yeah, no, I, uh, like, I don't mind Photoshop that much, but I know some people don't like it. That's okay. Whatever you prefer. I do have Clip Studio, by the way, if you are, like, an internet artist. I do have Clip. I'm just kind of stubborn. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, I had another thing I was gonna say. I don't remember what it was. Oh well, that's okay. You, your po- Me, my Pokemon all just sparse in the middle gens because I've only played Ruby. It was too long ago in Sword and Shield. Wulu evolves double. Double! That's the one. Thank you. Um, No, I felt anything before Gen 5 feels all muddled together because that's how I knew them all. As I, I Like, I didn't play any individual games before then, so then, like, all the other Pokemon kind of meld together for me. Okay. I know. You don't like it when I do that. But yeah, all the all the earlier games all kind of meld together for me. Just like I don't know which um Pokémon came in which generation very well. Like I kind of know Gen 1 kind of well, but like everything past that it's like, oh yeah, they're all just 
meld it together. I got into Pokemon when I was 10. So then like my, oh, that's ironic. I got into Pokemon when I was 10. Um, but I, I liked the cards back then, but they were all, I had one of those like really big, like guide to all Pokemon books. Um, that had every single Pokemon up to that point. So up to that point, it was all up to Gen 4. Um, so then they all just kind of mashed together in my brain. Um, yeah, and then Gen 5 came along with a whole new set of 150. And I knew, I knew those by heart. I still do kind of know them by heart. It's been a while, though. I used to play, like, Pokemon all the time. And then I became, like... I'm... In terms of games, I'm very much the type of person where it's like, oh, I finished the story? I guess I'm done. <laughs> That's usually what I'm like. I think the only game where I've broken that is, um... Breath of the Wild, because I still go back to it sometimes. But most games, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I finished the main story. I'm done. <laughs> Other secrets, I'll just watch them on YouTube or something. <laughs> I'm kind of being delicate with these USB plugs. I'm saving every once in a while, by the way. If you, when you're working digitally, um, remember to save all the time. Because you don't know what your software is like and it might crash all the time. Like, my, my softwares don't crash very often. None of them. Um, but when they do, it's a it's a lifesaver when they do save. Um, if you have one of those softwares that automatically saves, you're lucky. Um, but not all of them do. So for me, I have a Cintiq. So I have it pre-programmed into... Because I have Express Keys. Um, so I have it pre-programmed into, um, into my tablet where I can just click on it. Uh, click a button and it's saved automatically. Um... So if you have a tablet that has express keys, then you might want to do that. Or just get used to clicking control S, control S, control S all the time. Or if you're on a tablet, you know, maybe you just want to get used to <laughs> like on a on a touchscreen tablet, like an iPad or something, you might just want to get used to saving. Talking about Pokemon is nostalgic to you because when you're in ninth, sixth grade, it's all you and your buds talk about and play. Yeah, that was me in fourth grade. Pokemon was like my whole life in fourth grade. It was all my friends' lives, too. And they liked that I was able to draw all of them. <laughs> Growing up, I was, like, one of the only artistic kids in, um, in elementary who was, like, willing to share her work. Because, like, most of my friends who also drew, most of them were, like, they didn't really want to share their work that much. I'm a very open individual, like, clearly. Um, so, like, I was, I would just share my work all the time. But, you know. It's to each their own. If you're not comfortable with sharing your work, that's totally okay. But eventually you're going to have to get used to it. Um, especially if you want to go into art professionally. But yeah, no, I was a really big... My, my friends all liked that I could draw Pokemon. And they're like, oh, Jessica can draw the Pokemon for you. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Because most of it was just fun. Actually, when I was younger, don't do this, by the way, if you're younger, um, but when I was younger, I really liked to do my friend's art homework. So, like, if we had an art assignment, they'd come up to me and like, go, like, Jessica, can you, can you, like, draw, like, hearing Jessica, by the way, is so weird now, because, like, at, at work, everybody called me Jessie, and then most of my friends just call me Jess, so it's, like, it, it, saying Jessica is very strange um, to me now, <laughs> um, but... You know, um, but yeah, I'll be like, Jess, Jessica, can you like, actually, Jesse used to be my elementary school nickname, but, um, they'd be like, Jess, can you like draw my, can you draw this for me? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. And I'd sit there and I'd spend like 10 minutes drawing it and I'd be like, here you go. And then I'd basically be doing the art homework for everyone. And I, I told my parents about it and they were like, you can't do that. And I'm like, why? It's fun. <laughs> Looking back now, I'm like, how dare you do all of that work for them? Uh, it was so funny. I'm like looking back at it. I'm like, you're so dumb. Like you can't do that. <laughs> you shouldn't do. Don't do your friends' art homework for them. Don't do that. You gotta let them do their own stuff. Like if they need a little bit of help, sure, you can give them critique. You can, you know, whatever. But like, don't actually do their work for them. <laughs> they need to learn too. You know. Is <laughs> a lesson from someone who would, you know, just do anything. <laughs> I just draw for everybody. Because I just thought it would be fun. This 
back feels kind of like empty to me but like I don't know what to put here because like I have a bajillion stickers on the backs of my laptop but like I don't want to hmm. should I have a barnacle because that's kind of like hmm. it's kind of like a drowned laptop so I'm like I guess like what do y'all think y'all have suggestions what to put on the back of this thing <laughs> If you got ideas, put it into the chat, y'all. Chat, what do you think I should put on the back of this laptop? <laughs> I'm going to color it for now, but if you have suggestions, let me know. Your old laptop got drowned in coffee. That's so sad. <laughs> I've had tea. I've had everything spilled on this laptop. I swear. There was one to. I I got tea at a at a lec I was in a college lecture and like this girl was pushing past and she like knocked over my tea and it spilled on top of my laptop and I was like, bro. And yet my laptop still survived. So honestly, a tank. But that sucks. <laughs> Maybe it's glowing on the inside. Yeah, I was thinking of doing that too. Then that would also mean that I have to color in the background. Because then it, you can't really see the glow that well. Because it's a white background, right? Hmm. I could make it so then there's like a little bit of a thing here. A little bit of bounce light on these. I could do that, yeah. That could be fun. Stickers will give a personality, I'm not sure about the underwater theme. Yeah, I'm like, hmm. Because I was thinking of like a cuttlefish. That's what I was basing my thing off of. Um, yeah. The stickers will take forever. Um, oh, you know what? What if I did just like, could I? I guess I could. If I did like puffy stickers, that'd be kind of funny. If I did like barnacles or something, that'd be kind of funny. As if it's like a laptop sticker. <laughs> if I like hmm. that because I kind of like push the the thing the whole thing hmm. I can give it some stickers let's do that let's give it some like underwater theme stickers for fun airbrush the layer behind it yeah I was thinking of doing that it's just gonna stick out a lot compared to the others I'll probably do that oh you know what then you know what let's I have an idea, but I'll have to do it afterwards. Okay. Because I think all of my suggestions after this one were all electronic themed. This is a quick and easy way to do stickers, by the way, is if you color them in um, white first. Oh, is this on the line layer? Oh, well. I'll live. <laughs> oh, actually, no, I won't. I should. I should not do it this way. I should do it on the color layer. Yeah, that's a better idea. Um. Yeah, if you color them in white first, and then whatever you're planning on doing, do that on the inside. That's a really nice and easy way to do them. Um, stickers because it looks like the white outline of like a vinyl sticker <laughs> a globino I don't know what that means but I understand I felt <laughs> kind of look like rocks. Oh, let's make that darker. Hmm. 
<laughs> all right. I have an idea now. That means I'm gonna have to merge all these. Okay. So that means I'm going to have to. Oh, I should. No, you know what? Let's leave that. Let's do this. I have to reach down here to do that. Let's leave all these layers in here too. I am going to do. Okay. Warning again, you're probably going to get another flash of colors in a second. A flash of display while I move things around. Edit image. Canvas size. No, that's the canvas size. Let's change the width to like. Let's go to 5,000. You're gonna see black for a sec, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go to 2,300. And let's go back to one. There we go. Okay, that should be fine. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't take into account that I would be changing my canvas size sometimes, I'm sorry. Um, oh, I should. Excellent. Let's make that a new layer up there. Okay. Ah, oh, rip. That's kind of cut off. That's fine. Okay. I think I am doing... What was I doing next? I think it was a speaker. I'm going to have to check again. But if I'm doing all electronics now, then that means, come on, if I'm doing all electronics now, then that means that I can actually do this. Yes, if they're all glowing. <laughs> Deep sea electronics. Let's go for it. I like it. Let's do it. All right, what's next? It was a speaker, wasn't it? Oh no, I need to shade this. That's right. Let's turn this off for now then. Let's do some glows. Forgot to color these in. Whoopsies. It's okay, I won't take long. Oh, it's about a half hour left. That's fine. See, I knew this one would take me longer than usual. I should be naming these. That's fine. <laughs> Name your layers. I'm just doing, I'm not doing it for like just the sake of um speed, but you should be naming your layers. So I've shown you multiply. Oh, this is the wrong layer. I've shown you multiply. I am going to show you screen. Screen is another layer type that I really like. What screen does, it's what I use when I want to add on some extra light. Oh, where's the airbrush? There we go. Understanding bounce light is pretty important too. You have screen, don't you? Yes. There we are. Let's turn down the opacity a little bit. Yes. So screen kind of looks like this. Oh, that's the wrong eraser. This is the right eraser.
glows. It's a little bit glowy. All right, cool. So I think it was a speaker next. Depending on how long this speaker takes me, this might be my last one. Um, but I want to do a crab. I have a, I have a, sp I have a really old speaker that I use sometimes, and that's the one that I use to listen to music. I want to do a crab. Let's make a crab. I'm thinking kind of... It's a cool effect. Yeah, it's really easy. It's a nice and easy effect that you can get. Um, whoops. It's nice and easy. It's all just airbrushing and figuring out your layer styles. One one recommendation that I have if you're not too well versed in digital art is just one day just play around with your program, see what all the layer styles do, see what all the filters do. That way you can kind of get more familiar with your uh with your program. Ooh, should I do my Google Home? I have a big Google Home in my room. Should I do a I can use my old speaker or I can use my Google Home. I'm going to do both. Just because I'm feeling wild. <laughs> speaker crabs. Now you will never see your speakers the same ever again. I have ruined them for you. I'm sorry. Yeah, because there's like a little stand here. I can give him some eyes. Down here. So it looks like a giant shell. It kind of looks like that one um that one Pokemon. I don't remember his name. He kind of looks like a like a big rock crab. I don't remember his name though. <laughs> it's from Gen 5. That one I remember. I remember that the first evolution was Dwebble. I just don't remember the big the big evolution. Big rock crab. And give them little legs. The return of these. Let's give them giant legs down here as well. This has become Jesse just likes to draw spider legs, so she will continue to draw them. Crustal! Yes. <laughs> Crustal do be kind of crusty. Uh, <laughs> yes, Crustal. That's what I'm thinking. Big cube crab, you know what I mean? And the Google Home has, like, glowing dots. This is what my Google Home looks like. It's the big brick. It's the, it's the speaker. The big, like... Speaker that always sounds really nice. I'm gonna give him little legs though. Like an isopod. <laughs> and these glow. The little eyes glow. Oh, you know what? Let's give him a little tail too, because the cord is proprietary. And I think that's kind of funny. Okay. Do I have a favorite digital art trick? I have a few. Um, I think my favorite one is the um, what's it called? My favorite one has to be like the the magic wand, and then inverse, so that I can color. <laughs> It's so fast. It like saves me so much time. 
Um, but I also really like layer styles, just layer filters. That one's one of my favorites too. Cause like if you if you've never done it before, next time you do an art piece for anybody who's listening, for all y'all in chat who do digital work, next time you do an art piece, right? You're drawing something. Um, if it's a little more atmospheric or whatever, try to make a multiply layer and then put a like a flat color on it, and then lower the opacity to like ten percent of that layer. So like if you just you know take a layer, fill it in. Um, change the blending to multiply and then turn the opacity down to like 10 to 15 you'll note it and then turn it on and off you'll see the cohesion change multiply and overlay you're gonna want two of them and you'll see the you'll see the difference it's so nice it's like a it really makes it brings the whole piece together i think you don't have to use them but i find that they make pieces look 20 times better Like that's such a it's such an easy way to make your piece look super super cohesive. And just very nice and atmospheric. These lines are kinda hard to do on a dark pattern. You know, let's turn this off for a second. Oh, much easier. Much better. Yeah, I'll turn on the darkness when I start to color again. Oh, I should. Oh, you know what? Let's make these little let's make these little legs down here screws. So it's like they're Are they more like pincers? Underwater crab. <laughs> Underwater spider, sorry. They kinda look like spiders. Crabs are kind of just like water spiders, aren't they? Like less scary, more dumb. If you've never seen that video of a crab holding a knife, like fighting with a knife, it's the best thing you'll ever watch. I promise you. I know there's little feet at the back of this radio, so I'm gonna keep those in. Sorry, I whenever I do kind of some kind of like robotics, I have to focus a little bit. <laughs> I'm so bad at robotics. It's like it's not even funny. Like when I do, when I try to do robotics seriously, I have like three million references off to the side. Cause like I I'm so bad at coming up with it from imagination. Every artist has a weakness. I think that like most artists have some kind of weakness. Mechanics are mine. <laughs> I can draw you almost anything else. It's just mechanics that I think I am like so so bad at. Like, I can't, I'm so bad at cars, I can't do airplanes, trains. Like, can I do them? Yes, but it takes me an endless amount of time. Like, it takes me way longer. I'm so slow. And, like, I don't think um my brain has worked well enough for mechanics. Like, I know some of my friends, I have some friends who are really, really good at that stuff. Um, I have a friend who's in school right now for mechanical engineering I believe and he's like really really good at working with like 3D software and figuring that kind of stuff out. The other day actually not the other day but a few months ago he created this um uh this 3D model of a little um a, what's it called? You know those things that are like um pulled along by not a sleigh it's another word for it but it, it's kind of like a kind of like a sleigh or like a I don't know. It's one of those things. He 3D modeled it. It looked like a little little toy. It was so nice. 3D modeling is it's something you got to get used to. That's another art form that can be tricky if you've never done it before. Because there's a lot of things you got to worry about when you do it.
if you're thinking about doing 3D modeling, I'd recommend trying it. Oh my god. I'd, I'd recommend trying it first. Sorry, I, I dropped my pen. Um, I'd recommend trying it first with like a, a an easy, like a free software or something before you get into it properly. I think that's the same thing with most digital softwares. But like for 3D modeling especially, I think. It's 143 right now, by the way. So I think we have 17-ish minutes left. Which is fine. That should take us. These, these should take us to the end. I might be able to do one more like, nice and easy one. And just like Alyssa does, um, I will post these up. I will post these final ones up onto our Discord, which you can find in the description down below of this stream. Or if you check out any of our other videos, you can check our Discord link down in the description. Come join us. Come, come chat with other artists. Come and say hello, man. I'll be there. Alyssa will be there. You know, our creative director will be there. You know, there's a lot of us. There's a lot of us in that chat. It's nice and chill. Don't worry. No when, no want to worry. Nice and easy. You know what I mean? Okay. But yeah, no, it's digital, digital in general. It's like, you gotta, it's some, all, some of my online friends are like, they say like, oh, it's, I can work in traditional so easily, but digital is like so hard. And I'm like, yeah, it's a bit of an, an acquired taste. Like it, it's, as long as you have the willingness to do it, digital gets really easy. It becomes like kind of second nature. Like I, I still work traditionally quite often, um, but digital is what I prefer. Um, just overall, like I was painting a gouache the other day, and I was like, it's it was like a lineless kind of thing, right? Um, and I was painting, and I'm like, man, I could have done this in thirty minutes if it was digital. <laughs> you know, just paint bucket in those flat colors, nice and easy. Like with gouache, I'm like trying to be so exact with the paintbrush, and it's like it's. I have to, it's not like I'm using the, the color straight from the tube. I have to like mix them myself. So then like, but when I run out, I have to mix them again and I have to remember how much of each color I used, et cetera, et cetera. It's tricky. It's tricky. Okay. So this one, the eyes can be white. Cause that's what my Google home color is. Should I check? Should I call my Google home and see what she looks like for a second? Sorry, I refer to my Google Home as she because that's what her voice sounds like. Um, I'm like those people that call their, give their card pronouns. Hey, Yuri, lol. At least I keep promising that I should actually post them. They're still just whips, so I feel bad. It's okay. You'll get to them eventually, as I say with everything that I do. <laughs> so long as you get to it eventually. See, there we go. This should actually be darker. Oh, actually, no, this is fine. I'll just... Fingers start imaginary pressing control Z when I'm doing traditional art. A lot of digital artists say that they do that. I've never done that before. Like, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh man, I keep on forgetting that I can't use control Z. And I'm like, I've never actually done that before. Like, I <laughs> For me, it's always like, oh yeah, no, I just, I, I know. But like, that's kind of pompous of me to say, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, no, a lot of, a lot of digital to traditional do that. Where it's like, oh man. I forgot. I can't do this. Oh, I should have added the mm, this little this rate this um thing is a radio too. I can give him antenna. Yes. I forgot. 
Now it looks like he has antenna. <laughs> this thing is so old. It has a built-in radio. But, like, with a wire and antenna. But it works perfect. It has, like, an aux cord. So I just plug in my old phone to it. And I use it as, like, a... A speaker instead. It sounds... still sounds really nice, too. It's so old. It, when I say it's so old, I mean it's from, like, early 2000s. You can the this little dock down here plugs in like the iPod, like the like the first generation iPod, I think. <laughs> You've never done that either, but I always wishing you had an iDrop and other tools. You think you can, if you get started after you got a screen tablet? Uh yeah, I always wish I had an iDropper too when I work traditionally. iDroppers are your best friend. For those of you who are kind of starting out with digital, iDropper is your best friend. But it's also good to learn how to color pick with your eyes. I kind of like how ominous these speaker crabs are. <laughs> I'm very much a fan of ominous things. That's why I think cursed images are my favorite memes. I love cursed images. Like if you if you send me a cursed image, so good. <laughs> Close too. Hi, Jesse. Hello. Welcome in. I mean, the stream's almost over, but welcome in. <laughs> We got about 10 minutes, but welcome. That username is very familiar. I'm trying to remember. I'm sorry. I'm like, <laughs> but hello. Welcome in Gold Pika 500. All right, should I add more extra stuff to the, yeah, why not? Let's make these a little more funky. Do you know what some of my, some of my favorite, sorry, I'm gonna go on a tangent again. You know, some of my favorite character design that I've seen, if you've never played, um, or if, you don't have to play it, but if you've never seen a playthrough or something for, it's a game called Subnautica. If you've never played, or seen playthroughs of it. That's some of my favorite alien creature concept design. It's so good. Like, I love Subnautica with, like, my whole heart. I've never played it, um, but I've watched a lot of playthroughs, and, like, I love Subnautica. They're, it's just such smart design. I think what helps is that they're all marine biologists. <laughs> so, like, Subnautica, if you don't know, is a game about um, you get stranded on this alien island that's, like, mostly ocean. Um... And, like, you're, the whole goal is for you to escape, but you learn so much about this planet and what's happened to it and why it's, like, all abandoned. It's really, really good. I so recommend it. Um, yeah, but, yeah, some of my favorite creature design is in that game just because it's so smart. It's so well done. Multiply. There we go. Let's go. Easy. <laughs> if you just... I'm just gonna have to erase a little bit of it. They are looking ominously. They are. Um, but yeah, no. Especially because like their um their creature design is so practical. That's another really good thing. Is like, um, because they're all marine biologists, they understand you know a lot of like um design like biological design comes from you know actual practicality. And like it works, and because they know that it works so well in their favor, because they know how to work with it. 
which is really, really good. Like, they have the advantage of being marine biologists. <laughs> hey, Dee! Uh, hi, Violet. <laughs> Sorry, I know. That's an online friend of mine. Um, stream's almost over, but hello. You play Ark. Ark is an older game. I do know what Ark is, though. Yes. Ark is, like, with the dinosaurs, if I remember correctly. Oh, yes, I guess I can zoom out. These are all the creatures that you've done. Object creatures. I personally, I think my favorite is the washi tape bunnies. <laughs> Although I do like these ominous robotic crab speakers. <laughs> Thank you for the suggestion, Arunia. Um, for my... The ominous... Or the washi tape bunnies. Um, I don't remember who recommended the speakers. I think that was Icy, if I remember correctly. Um, oh, Trads, I'm late. It's okay. <laughs> These always last for two hours, so it's kind. Of, it's a little short, but that's all right. Glad to have you here, nonetheless. I'm just doing like some quick glows. Yeah, we got about seven minutes, y'all. So these will. This will be my last one. Um. I should unclip this. Let's get rid of the clipping. Yeah, so the glow is a little bit more apparent. <laughs> I, li I just like how ominous they are. <laughs> oh. oh, I have a capacity by pressure on. Let's just keep size by pressure on. I think that's. Oh, maybe not. Uh, let's turn this off too. They're very glowy. I very like the designs. Thank you. I like the glowy boys. I like the... <laughs> I like how simple the Google Home is. It's just like... It's a rectangle with legs. I kind of love it. Um, like, it's definitely not a very sophisticated design, but you know, whatever. If I wanted to go for extremely sophisticated, I would be here for hours. Um, Lord knows how much I love crazy designs. Um, oops. I mean, what I could do... Hmm. Let's try something. Personally, I'm not like a huge, huge fan of how the airbrush handles in this program. There's a lot of things I would change about it. Like, it works for what it is, but I think I would change a lot if I had the option to. Overlay? No, let's make this screen lower that. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, if I had the option, I'd change a little bit about it. The Windex bottle. Yeah, I'm realizing that I kind of modeled it after the Windex bottle that was in my brain. It's supposed to be Lysol. Um, but understandable, yeah. The Windex bottle. Yeah, there's a few things in Medibang that I think if I had the option, I wouldn't change. But it's okay. It's a really, really good starter program. If you've never... If you're not too, too um, well-versed with it. Or with digital in general. Yeah, there's about three minutes left, so I don't think I'm going to start a new one. Um, but I think I can actually end it here because, you know, I don't want to start a new one and then take another 20 minutes. <laughs> um, but hey, thanks so much for joining. Um, thanks for seeing me. Joining me for the first time. Indulging with me. Because um, hey, this was fun. Uh, 
again. Um, one last time, be sure to check out our socials. There is our Discord channel up on the link or in the link down below. You can talk to me, you can talk to my coworkers, get some feedback from us if we're available. We can't be at your beck and call all the time. Um, but hopefully you can join us, come chat with us, um, see what we're all about. Um, we also have an Instagram, and if you use Facebook, there's also a Facebook um, account that you can come and check out. Um, our Instagram will like also let you know about future streams, whether, with, whether they're with myself or Alyssa. Um, we do stream bi-weekly, um, as in I stream every other week, and then Alyssa will fill in for when I am not. So next week it will be Alyssa streaming once more. Um, but And then after that it will be me again. Um, but hey, thanks for joining. Remember that we stream weekly. That's 12 p.m. EST. Um, but yeah, thanks so much. I'll try to tune in for future streams for sure. Do you think a lava lamp would be a sea boy? Oh, probably. Oh, a lava lamp would have been so good. Oh, well, it's okay. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for joining for the duration of the stream. I will see y'all another day. Bye-bye. <laughs>